we have ribs at home, they say, when you lament that you want your baby back, baby back, baby back ribs. Well, these are the ribs at home, and I'm telling you, they do be doing things right by us here at A Cooking Thing. The core of a good rib is in the combo of brine and dry rub. Now, let's be honest, a good dry rub is maybe one of the single most important things for you to add to your arsenal as a budding chief, because dry rub is the main bub. Like, best friend? or whatever. I don't know, I'm trying to make new slang. My dry rub is equal parts chili powder, onion powder, garlic powder, oregano, and two parts smoked paprika, and two parts black pepper. These are the cool kids, and they're gonna go hang out in this large bowl that they won't let me hang out in because I'm weird. Next to the same bowl, you wanna add a mix of two cups of brown sugar and a tablespoon or so of salt. It's a lot of salt, I know, but this is essentially all the salt that we're using for the whole dish, including the brine, ribs themselves, and the barbecue sauce. So it's gonna spread around. Mix it thoroughly, and don't be afraid to taste and figure out what you wanna add. The golden rule of chefing is that your mouth is the best tool for you to taste your food with, and if it's good, you know, and when you know, you know, what, what was I saying? Is that a bird? Okay, dry rub is done. So it's time to prep the brine, which is going to start by getting like a quarter cup or so of our dry rub mixed with a pint of nice light beer, which I taste tested because I am a chef, okay? No judging. Because I'm basically winging it like any good chef, instead of finishing the brine, we're gonna prep the meat now instead, which starts by removing the weird membrane on the bottom side and some of, but not all of the excess fat. Something I wish I could do consistently to myself but YouTube loves unhealthy fun things, and we don't waste food on this channel, so subscribe, because maybe that'll make my wasteland worth it, right? I don't know. Okay, meat is prepped, so check it into a big old pot. Preferably take a moment to contemplate your existence and what brought you to this place in your life. Then, get some ice in a very normal, careful, not at all awkward way. Then pick up the pieces of some ice that randomly got on the floor because you used the refrigerator ice dispenser that did not work at all. What were we doing? Right, drop the beer slash dry rub onto the ribs, making sure to get the excess out of the vessel. Then it's time to fill to the brim with apple cider, 100% from Kroger. You can use any kind you want though. Honestly, I am not sponsored by Kroger. Fill the rest of the pot with water if you need to until the ribs are fully submersible like the yellow submarine they are. Then cover it and it's into the fridge for 24 hours. Do whatever you need to do for those 24 hours. Time is our ally, but it is fleeting. All right, time has passed, thus the new shirt and shorts. I'm two thirds of the way to being eligible to receive service. One day I'll buy those shoes. We're doing like a half charcoal, half smoky method, which is finicky, but it's what I have and what a lot of people would have because not everyone has smoker money, like money for a meat smoker, not that smokers are in some sort of higher salary bracket for some reason. So we're adding some hickory chips to a bowl and in an effort to not waste, we're gonna soak them in the brine from the ribs, which is something that you would do normally with just water, but I think this is clever, right? I don't know, stop, you're making me blush. <laughs> Clever. Now, season two of A Cooking Thing is the season of chillin' and grillin', so let's prep that beautiful kettle baby. I'm using some natural cut charcoal, which adds more smoke, but it does run a little hot, so you need to be careful of the heat. You're looking for slow and low, but more on that a little later. Once they're nice and hot, which is going to be anywhere from 15 to 20 minutes, we're pouring them out into our grill on one side like so. We can let that rest for a little because it's going to be hot at first. We're aiming for a consistent grill temp of around 250 for a 3 hour cook approximately. Okay, while that's going, we're back in the kitchen to roll out some aluminium foil, or aluminum if you're in the colonies. Lay out your ribs, loosen up the dry rub, and spread it evenly on all sides of that ribbit king. Make sure you're really earning that six month massage therapist certification. Your instructor Terry should be really proud of how thorough and gentle yet firm you are. Wrap it up halfway, then cover the other half with an aluminium foil tent. You kinda wanna make a channel for the smoke to groove through. Oh, and make sure you save about half a cup or so of your dry rub for the barbecue sauce. This ain't a store-bought family if that wasn't clear. So now we're gonna sprinkle our hickory chips onto the hot coals. This is gonna add a little bit more smoke, and then we're gonna set our wrapped ribs on the opposite side of the grill from the coals. Place a meat thermometer in the thickest part of the meat, careful not to stick it into a bone, and lid the whole affair with the ventilation on the side of the ribs to channel the smoke through that way. 
Remember to watch your temperature though. You really don't want to get too hot or too cold in there. So feel free to open it up for a bit or add more fresh coals if you need to just to maintain that temperature. We're looking for a rib temp of 205 degrees Fahrenheit so that it's going to render the fat and let the tenderness begin. Okay, back in the kitchen because we got to make a sauce and a rich spicy sweet vinegar based barbecue sauce is exactly what the doctor ordered. <laughs> for my back, which has been sore lately for carrying the entire culinary community on it. Burn. Doctor says I need to lift with my knees. I don't know what that means. So sauce starts with our dry rub in a saucepan on low heat. In comes a quarter cup or so of apple cider vinegar. Then we squeeze like a third of a cup-ish of tomato catsup, or ketchup if you're uneducated. Whisk it and monitor it until it starts to reduce and get thick. Don't forget your training. You gotta taste that sauce to become the sauce boss. Only then will you understand the... Okay, it's nice and thick, and the meat is getting close to its final temp, so we're gonna get those two together like a painfully obvious rom-com. Uncover the ribs and coat entirely with the sauce boss. We're gonna let that caramelize on low heat for 30 minutes, flipping after 15. Perfect. You could also do this in the oven, which by the way is a much more consistent way to do it heat-wise than if you wanted to, you could finish on the charcoal grill for the caramelizing part. Both of these are really good options, just one is a little bit more technical and interesting to watch, so that's why I did it this way. Time to plate, so grab a slab, claw some slaw, and drizzle that sizzle or other rhyming things that demonstrate beyond any doubt that you know how to make ribs better than the rib ridge at McDonald's and the baby back ribs of Chi Lai's fame. You could even get a little cornbread going for a flawless American barbecue summer celebration jamboree coming this May, June, July, or September whenever Americans are in peak barbecue season. Except for August for some reason? And I'm telling you, you don't need a heavy dessert or anything for the 4th of July, so we're definitely going to do something low-key for that. Don't worry. Till next time, don't forget that the inner sheaf is in you, and the only way to reach them sometimes is to dip your little fingy in some sauce and give it a little smooch, okay? Just a little free sample, Costco style, for Graham Graham. Hey, where'd that bird go? <laughs>